uh, or pretty much, pretty much immediately. Um, in October, right about when it was about to get picked up, there was a 12 day government shutdown, which I know a lot of people have recently experienced. And it's very frustrating, though they may be by days very short. This was a 12 day shutdown. I was beside myself, and it really, it, I mean, it meant everything was frozen, and my application was just sitting there, and I felt like it's about to be picked up by the timeline. And then it, the impact of that 12-day closure was really a backlog. I mean, I, I felt like it added at least 90 days to my process because oh, yeah. it wasn't until another 90 days that my file got re-picked up, you know. So, you know, that's a tough time, but... There's things to do. There's plenty to do. I was building out the space or, you know, working with my contractors to build out the space. Um, and so, but I, I just, you know, when I see the code all out, what could a government shut down, how could that impact me? I think, you know, it's a wild card, really, because it's going to have a bigger impact than the, just the number of days that shutdown happens. Um, but that's just one of, oh gosh, there's so many challenges, you know, the, the, the different licensing, uh, the different agencies, the local level, the contracting, the building, getting through all those inspections. That takes just so much back and forth. And uh, this was probably an area where I was, I, it was one of those cases of you're not really sure what all you're getting into when you say, I want to open a metery. Because I was very focused on, let me see, I've got to figure out how to scale up and my equipment and what techniques and blah, 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 so much about mead. But here's a whole segment that doesn't have anything to do with mead. It has to do with building codes and a whole number of other hurdles that I know so many people are very familiar with. And just dig deep and find help and do the best you can. The good news is that every one of us, um, we'll get through that eventually. Yeah. Well, Jaden was saying it's one day at a time, just got to chip away at the block. And, and he's right. You know I mean? Basically it, I, I kind of like the, I kind of like the, the thing that I saw in, if you've seen the movie, the Martian, or if you've read the book and he says, <laughs> okay, well, if you haven't seen the movie, please do. It's an excellent movie. It was really well done, stuck to the book pretty well all the way through. The book was amazing. The movie was pretty amazing, too. But anyway, one of the last lines in the movie is um, is showing the, the uh, protagonist, and he's in front of a classroom, and he's going, all right, space is out to kill you. There's no forgiveness. There's no understanding. It's out to kill you. And one at one point or another, he says, at one point or another, you are going to think that you're just you're going to die that that you're going to die he says and then that's when you get down mm-hmm. and you get dirty he says you just tackle the first problem then the next problem then the next problem then the next problem until you're either dead or you're not and he says and that's all you can do <laughs> and you know i mean he's right you know it's like you think about it either right. you're you know you, you just keep tackling the problem sooner or later you'll get to the end of it one way or the other you know <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and and that's true and it's true in life and it's true and it's true in business you know i mean it, it really is you just got to knock them down one at a time Absolutely. yeah until until you figure that's out excellent. where you're getting to yes. yeah go watch the movie trust me when i say you i've seen <laughs> yeah, the movie definitely. like 50 times and i never get tired of it it's so good i think it's i think it's matt damon's best role ever <laughs> he was perfect but yeah, if you if you're a so reader, awesome. if you're a reader, read the book or listen to the audio. They're both really, 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 really good. And I mean, they're just yeah, I can't tell you how good they were. The author was just hit it out of the park in his first book. Um, so okay, when you went to get sorry, <laughs> sidebar over. <laughs> I love it. No, it's great, great recommendation. Yeah, it's well, yeah, and I say we just yeah, we we both just love it. It's just a really good thing. But uh, that was that line really caught me because it's true, you know. You just yeah, have to take them perfect. one thing at a time until you get done with the things. And the things never really stop, but some of them are life or business threatening and some of them aren't, you know. I but, think you're going to die. Like, oh, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Not gonna, I'm not going to get this dream. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you give up, you're definitely not going to get it. That's the thing. How do you know unless you try? I mean, it's, I used to, uh, I've done business coaching for a lot of people and um, that one of the things I run into a lot is people saying, well, I don't know, there's just so many obstacles. And I'm like, and your point is what? 
everything's an obstacle. They're, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you, it was all, you had Taking an obstacle, to learning to ride Taking a bike, to yeah, learning to walk, learning to ride a bike, getting through school, getting through college, <laughs> you know, getting a job, uh, making marriage work. I mean, come on. It just goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. You know, everything's mm-hmm. an obstacle. It's just yeah. a question of how you look at it. So, you know. Mm-hmm. So speaking of which, um, when Love you were yeah. when you were going for your approvals, did you bring in legal help or did you just go for it? Um, that was one of the areas where I chose to uh, go for it, and I had been very very concerned because I spent uh, you know a lot of time reading through the CFR and all the stuff that really I was like I'm not sure I don't I don't know what this means. Um, but I, in part of my exploration and writing the business plan, I visited and talked to so many people, but I remember I was talking to, um, Sean Lee Wilson of Full Steam Brewery in Durham, uh, and he's an amazing guy and he ha- runs an amazing brewery and Sean, but the licensing looks so hard and his words, I'll just never forget. And it was so helpful. He said, uh, you know, you'll get through it. I mean, look at us. We're just a bunch of guys running a brewery. You know, it's not like we have any special skills. If you can fill out a college application, he said, yeah, it's hard, and it never, it, a lot of it doesn't make any sense, mm-hmm. but you'll Welcome get to the government. It. Yeah. You'll get through it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I mean, think about did. it. You know, if you've yeah. ever done your own taxes and, and survived that, then you can do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it really took a load off, and – um I load off what I was so focused and worried about. He's like, you got way other bigger things to worry about than that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It was so helpful. So helpful. So with that under my wings, I felt like, you know what? I thought I was just picking this up. Plus, I had also met Ben and Becky Star, Starlight Meadery. And honestly, I just wouldn't even be here today if I hadn't met them so early in my process because – They've been, you know them, Vicki, and they're oh, amazing, yeah, they're great people. generous, giving, loving, great people. And yeah. they were so encouraging for me. And um, so I also had their backing and their support and could go to them. And they were like, open, here's our business plan. So look, here's our a formula we submitted. That's how we do it. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that I love about this industry that that's out there and um i certainly benefited and appreciated um going with them to the north carolina wine growers association we're buds and i i so look forward to um spending time with them because we just talk 100 percent about our meadery businesses and <laughs> it's a delight to have that support everywhere i go that i meet other meadery owners you don't always see that no well so, the the mentoring and teamwork thing is, from my understanding, very common. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of people that go and they work with, um, you know, another when they're getting they're they're getting their meter restarted. They go to another metery and work there. Uh, uh, Sergio does a lot of that. Frank Goldbeck over at Golden Coast does that. Brad's done that. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. They've There's, incubated so many. They have people incubated out of so many people. Yeah. And it's really cool <laughs> because uh, at least at this point, our industry is really in a, we, uh, you know, we either all succeed or fail together. It's a rising tide floats all boats is our kind of our, our industry motto. And, um, Right. I think that's really cool. I mean, Bed and Becky used to offer, I don't know if they're still doing it, they were offering how to start a meadery classes. And they had basically like a little mini oh, I took school. It. I took yeah, it. Yep. I figured you did. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did. And I mean, I already knew them then too. But I was like, I'm taking your course. Oh yeah, I love it. I need more information. I mean, I'm just gonna. Yeah, I, I'd say that a prerequisite really when it is you got to kind of be a lifetime learner because you are going to run up against so many different challenges. And I think it's just that's just a quality of entrepreneurship. Yeah, yeah, it is. And yeah. I, I'm a big believer in, you know, if you help other people, it's only going to create more success for everyone, you know, it, and, and, and gosh really? knows and we're too. nowhere me near too. saturation in North Carolina. You know, we've got what, three, four, five meteries now. <laughs> and I think one more that's in process. So, um, you know, it's not um, like, yeah, yeah. Well, there's you in Durham and there's Ben and Becky out in, uh, in, uh, Pittsburgh, 
there's uh, two, one in Asheville and one outside Asheville. And then I heard there's another one going in process, and I don't know where they're at. So, you know. Yeah, Charles Myers has got something in process. Oh, yeah, Bramble I heard folks that. Are near Asheville. And uh, um, Fox, uh, Fox, Fox Hill Fox is in. Has always been. Fox Hill has always been, uh, or has been one of the early ones in North Carolina. And we incubated um, R.J. Castle, who's going to be starting up um, a bragging rooster meadery. So there's a meadery in process for the. Where's he at? Oh, I can't. It's on the I-95 corridor in the more northern part of North Carolina. Ooh, cool. He's close. The town He's close then. That's cool. Looking. I didn't know RJ was He's an NC man. That's cool. You. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm closer to you than I am to him, but still, 95 is a good hour and a half, but yeah. Um, I can, we can get there. I'll and come kidnap you and we'll go. Yeah. The, yeah. Cideries everywhere. Yeah. Uh, cideries. Good road. I just got a chance to try the good road mead and avocado honey mead Ooh. at the North Carolina area we the mead maker there she came to the meadery so there's a lot uh busting out in yeah North Carolina. And not to mention uh not to forget one of my mentors dana acker of windsor run in the adkinville area he's uh, a winery okay. distillery and he's made beautiful meads for years yes and doesn't he do like me, he only does me meads. so much he only does meads like every so often though right Every so often, he makes a uh, fortified apple yeah. that's so, so good because it has his own um, apple brandy in it as well. That's and, what I've uh, heard, yeah. So, yeah I never seem to get any when he's making that. it, mm. yeah. Well, he does short runs, and he does them like every two or three years, and then by the time you hear about it, it's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's like, I think what he a might pain. be producing a little bit more now. Oh, I hope so. so yeah, I'll, have to, I'll catch up with you. I'll catch up with you uh uh, offline to get the to get the updated list because there's some of those you mentioned that I didn't realize they were here. I was thinking they were in Virginia or something. Um, so yeah, I have to dig those up because you know I had to visit all the meteries in North Carolina. <laughs> oh, I know it. <laughs> yeah, I spent I spent two months visiting forty of them around the country. I should at least get to see the ones in NC. Um, <laughs> Okay, so you, you, what made you decide to set up in Durham? Was it because that's where you lived or just? Durham. Man, I love this town. Um, I have lived here more than I've lived anywhere as an adult. So uh, 25 years now. And when I was conceptualizing the meadery, I just knew that it would be in Durham. Um, Durham is an awesome town uh, that embraces... Uh, everything and uh, we didn't have a meadery we have a lot of uh, beloved craft breweries beloved um, uh, we found cidery very close to when we opened the Bull City Cider Works and uh, Durham's known for food Uh, you know Durham's reputation uh, definitely supported the concept of a meadery but for me I knew that it wouldn't be anywhere but in the town where um, I have made my home and that I'm so in love with. So it's nice that the uh, whole downtown Durham scene and the food scene and the food reputation has just continued to grow and grow. Yeah, the uh, hot dog truck that was around the corner at the brewery that's on the next block from you, nice hot dogs. <laughs> Oh, Fetch probably at Pony Forest Brewery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We didn't get a beer because we've been yeah, it's you nice because we, we've been drinking over at your place, and <laughs> we did have to drive back. So you know, but my friend and I that were both there, right. um, you know, we both of us live in Wake, you know, over by Wake Forest, so it's a goodly ways, and don't want to get picked up by the cops. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm glad you got to stop by. Oh yeah, me too. I'm really happy. I did. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back by. You know, when you're not like Slam City, and we'll do some pictures and stuff and get you up on the site. Um, but Sweet. yeah, <laughs> and when I can when I can uh, pick up a few bottles to take home too, because I didn't take any home that night, and I should have. Um, <laughs> so did Durham. Did Durham make it easy or hard for you to get your local approvals? Sometimes the local city folks in various cities are like, Mead, what the hell is that? And they, you know, they have issues. What, you know, what was it like for you? Yeah, thankfully we didn't, we didn't I didn't run into that. Um, I, uh, 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 I, it was a big learning curve, I will say that. 
I mean, I was looking for real estate in places that were never going to work out because I myself didn't have 